And as you can tell by the title, today we're going to read the second half of the book I wrote when I was in the seventh grade. So I was about like 12 or 13, talking about abusive relationships and family, even though I'm not in either. The link to the first half of this video will be in the description box below. So make sure you go watch that first before you watch this one or not, you know, do as you please. So today we're going to read chapter five. So let's just get into it. I just want to get this video out the way so we can get more content coming for you guys during the summer. Also, we're at 500 subscribers which is like okay <laughs> but yeah i'm also gonna film the part four for the high school story time sometime soon so prepare to hopefully get spam the content we're gonna try to be on top of it this summer okay per without further ado let's get into chapter five i'm gonna put my glasses on so i can actually see okay oh she looks smart she looks educated let's get into it okay at school i had to work 10 times harder to make people believe i'm a normal 17 year old i can imagine the 10 year old doing the same thing at her school was she 10 this whole time i don't remember i had to plaster face smiles all day and pretend to laugh at the appropriate times which is on brand with the cover page she gets into it on brand also this book is literally falling apart each time i open it it's falling apart more and more i don't think she has much left over the past 11 years i've mastered the art of pretending today it was harder though all day i was thinking about my mom and what her crazy plan was if she really wanted the three of us to run away it should have been a comma somewhere but okay after 11 years of abuse why am i putting these into <laughs> They're all into separate sentences. Blah, 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 period. After 11 years of views, period. That's so random. Maybe I put that for infants to finally get away from New York and all the bad memories and people that lies within it. Too deep in thought, I ended up bumping into someone on my way to lunch. I fell on the floor and my purse and everything inside it scattered across the floor. Luckily, most students were already in their classroom or in the cafeteria, so that saved some of my embarrassment. The person I bumped into reached down to help me off of the floor. When I looked up at the person, it was of course jay sorry for that i said after he helped me up and helped me pick up the things off of the floor what goes on in that little head of yours he asked with a smile but i can tell there was a hint of genuine curiosity a lot of thinking i answered truthfully yeah that kind of what happens when you're in your head you think it's kind of what the brain is for but uh let's get into it you could stop thinking it causes headaches Imagine y'all heard this dialogue in the show. Oh my god, I hope I was not trying to be a screenwriter anytime soon. But I am a mass media arts major, so that's concerning. I would not put this in my portfolio. I would not get hired at all. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Nobody said anything for a while. I was about to go to the cafeteria, but Jay spoke before I could leave. Do you want to go grab McDonald's or something before lunch is over? Isn't that skipping? Even though I said this, I knew I was going to say yes in the end. Yeah, but who cares? It's not like we're skipping an actual class. We'll be back in time and nobody will notice we're gone. He turned around and started walking towards the front door. I rolled my eyes and jogged to catch up with him. The way she did not say yes verbally out loud. Wipe that smirk off of your face, I said. We walked out of the school without anybody seeing us or bothering to stop. We got in Jay's truck and left the school behind us. Jay and I were in the McDonald's parking lot eating our cheeseburgers and french fries. Why did I capitalize french fries? Anyway, while listening to the radio. Since we're project partners, Jay started after he finished all of his fries. I think we should get to know each other more. Okay, how do we do that? Are we not going to address that? they had a full on five hour conversation the day before like y'all both not gonna be like hey why would we talk until one o'clock in the morning you know we not gonna address that okay we could play a game i made up we each get 10 questions to ask the other person and that person has to answer truthfully you don't have to ask all 10 questions at once but you have to ask them before the deadline for the project so basically 21 questions but make it 10 questions got it okay you start i said this will be interesting i'll give you an easy question if you had three wishes what would you wish for i've thought about this question so many times in my life and every time i always come up with the same three wishes i wish to be invincible to be 18 and have my dad back first of all 18 is not what it's crept up to be i'm not even 18 i'm 19 but the 18th year i spent in a pandemic so girl it's not even what they said it was supposed to be you know it's not giving what they said it was supposed to give so don't get your hopes up i said that last wish softly but Jay still heard me. He was staring at me with a frown on his face, all thoughts of the food gone. What happened to your dad? He died in a motorcycle accident when I was two. Okay, but when did her stepfather come into the picture? Cause she said 11 years ago and the math is not math. Anyway, I barely remember anything about my father
father. The only things that I have to remember him by is a few pictures of him and a teddy bear he gave me when I was one. I do know that he was a much better man than Derek will ever be. From the pictures, I could tell that my dad loved me and the feeling was mutual. I'm so sorry for you. Don't be sorry for me, I'm a baby, okay? Jay was looking at me like I was about to fall apart right at that moment. That's one of the things I hate about telling people about my dad. They'll always say I'm sorry or I feel bad for you because one, they didn't cause him to die and two, I bet they don't feel as bad as I do because in reality, they can go home and be with their fathers or if their dads did die, I bet they at least remember something about him. Stop looking at me like that. I'm not an injured puppy. I sounded meaner than I meant to and I could tell by the hurt that flashed in Jay's eyes that I offended him. Look, I didn't mean to sound that harsh. It's just that every time someone finds out about my dad, they always look at me like I'm some helpless little girl. There's worse things in life. What could be worse than losing your dad before you could actually get to know him? You're already asked two questions. I think that's enough about me for one day. I put your as you are, then I put already asked two questions. I think it's supposed to be you already asked two questions. I think that's enough about me for one day. I tried to avoid the question. I knew I have to tell him everything that had happened to me as soon as my mom married the monster. And I don't think I'm ready to tell anybody. It's just not safe. And I definitely don't need Jay to pity me any more than he already does. Plus we have to get back to school. I knew Jay wasn't going to let this question go, but he started the car and we headed back to the school. The rest of the ride was quiet, except for the radio playing in the background. Jay and I got into school without any teachers noticing we were missing. Jay friends, of course, noticed he was gone because they literally cannot survive without being by Jay's side. My friends, however, barely noticed I was gone. It wasn't until I came up to our regular table and asked one of my supposedly closest friends what I missed that they actually noticed I was gone. What awesome friends I have, I thought to myself. For the rest of the day, I continued to pretend I was listening to the conversations going on and that I was paying attention to the teachers. I called Jay staring at me several times during the rest of the day. That's the end of chapter five. Honestly, not too bad, not too bad. I need the plot to thicken a little bit, you know. We get some character one-on-one development, we love that. Chapter six, the school day was over and I was walking to go pick Olivia up from school. I was listening to music, but only had one ear plug in, just in case. Right, right, because I don't trust, I don't trust listening to music while I'm walking. Cause I need to keep an eye out for Selena, you know? I need to, I need to know what's going on. So I don't listen to music often because I always feel like somebody's watching me or like, you know, making their moves, trying to catch me slipping. I was about to turn the corner to get to Olivia's school when out the corner out of my eye, I saw an unfamiliar car and it was following me. Every time I walked faster, it would speed up just a little bit. And every time I slowed down, it matched my speed. On instinct, I broke into a sprint towards the school. My earphones were getting caught up in my arms. So I tried to stuff them in my pocket while I was still running. This was before AirPods, baby. Okay, we had wires. As soon as I got to Olivia's school, I ran inside, not bothering to look back. Olivia was sitting on a small bench outside of the front office with the other car riders and walkers. Why are you out of breath? She asked when I got closer to where she was sitting. It's nothing for you to be worried about. I grabbed her hand and we walked to the front office door so I could sign her out. I looked over my shoulder towards the front door several times, hoping Derek wouldn't walk through it. After I signed Olivia out, I was about to call my mom to see if she could pick us up from the school instead of the library because I do not want to go back out there with a possible murderer following us. I watched my fair share of horror movies. I know what happens to those stupid people. When I was about to hit the call button, Jay texted me. I know you're mad at me, but you really didn't have to run away like that. I just wanted to see if you wanted to work on the project. My mouth literally fell open. It was Jay this whole time. Oh, sorry. I thought you were a psycho killer. You know you can't just roll up on somebody like that, right? Well, I called your name, but you weren't listening. Sorry, we can meet at the library down the street if you still want to. Jay is a stalker. Jay, if you want her, just say it. Like, you act real suspicious. I'm in the parking lot. We can all ride together. It's kind of weird that he actually stayed in the parking lot, I thought, but I still accepted his offer. Olivia and I went outside and found the car I saw following me parked right in front of the school. We got in the back seat after making sure it was really Jay. What happened to your truck? I asked after Jay started to drive. One of my teammates wanted to borrow it, so we traded. Oh, was all I said. We all fell into an awkward silence. What happened to your face? Jay asked out of the blue. My heart stopped for a few seconds. I tried to mask my surprise and concern by looking out of the window. What do you mean? I said, trying to control my voice. I was talking about your sister. I looked at Olivia. Her olive skin. I told y'all she was white. I told y'all they were white. 
I told y'all. Her all, it's always all of skin. I feel like I just Googled different skin complexion and I saw all of it. I just ran with it. Her all of skin had healing scars on her cheeks and a cut from her right eyebrow to her temple that looked like she just got it. I didn't notice it. It should have been, I didn't notice it until that moment. I'll ask her about her later. She looked at me with a flash of right in her eyes. Um, I fell, she said, stumbling on her lie. That was one pretty nasty fall, Jay said, obvious that he didn't believe the classic I fell lie. What about you? He has looked at me in the rear view mirror. What about me? I was pretty sure I covered up all my scars and bruises on my face with makeup. What happened to your arm? I looked down at my arms. There was one long belt welt on my left arm and some scratches on my right arm. I fell? I said more as a question than a statement. Try again. I sighed. Please don't make me tell you. I tried to communicate with him through my eyes in his rear view. Do I have to? I asked trying to avoid answering the question. Truthfully was all he said. At this point that's three questions baby. You asking a lot. Before before I answered, we pulled into the library parking lot. I wanted to jump out of the car, but he didn't unlock the doors, and I knew if I tried to make a run for it, he'll eventually catch up to me. I had no choice. I was trapped. I had to face this head on. I looked Jay right in his eyes. There's worse things in life. And then I tell him everything. <gasps> wow. Let's let's go back to the reference in chapter five, shall we? Cause that I feel like that was a little that was a little a little movie screenwriting writer of me, you know? Wow. <laughs> I don't know why I feel so proud. But it's, it's very cliche, but honestly, I think it's beautiful. Anyway, chapter seven. Imagine Olivia in the background just like, child, we ain't never done this before. What is this, honey? Chapter seven. During my storytelling, I started to cry. Not crying where I couldn't finish a sentence, but just little teardrops. When I glanced at Olivia, she was silently crying also. After about five minutes or so of ranting, I finished. Only five minutes, baby. Only five minutes of this whole story. Only five minutes. Okay. Nobody said anything. Jay had turned around in his seat and was staring speechless. I wiped my tears and waited for everybody to get their thoughts together. Even though I just told Jay, a person who I didn't talk to until a few days ago, my deepest, darkest secret, I felt a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. It feels like I could finally breathe. When I started talking about what happened, it was hard for me to stop at a certain point. It seemed like no matter where I stopped at, there would missing pieces in the puzzle. That's what I wrote. <laughs> so I just told him everything. From when my dad died all the way to last night leaving nothing out but now i had to wait for the most excruciating part excruciating part his reaction earth to jay i tried to say in a jokingly way to lighten the mood how come why didn't he do he tried to form a coherent question but couldn't get his mind around what i told him because if i told somebody they'll make it worse and i don't trust anybody other than olivia and my mom what about the child protective services they'll put me and olivia into foster homes and separate us from our mom but china look jay if you're really my friend and you truly want to help me you let this go you'll pretend this never happened and move on with our lives okay you're not serious are you he asked with shock written all over his face you seriously want me to forget the fact that you and your little sister gets abused every single day yes i do in fact china you can get help you don't have to be afraid jay how about this if i need your help then i'll call you but right now i need you to let this go with that said i reached between jay chair and pushed the button to unlock the door come on olivia i grabbed my book bag and got out of the car with olivia trailing behind me we ran into the library ignoring the people looking at us and jay calling my name china can we go home now i'm tired and it's getting dark olivia looked like she was on the verge of tears i know olivia mommy's supposed to come pick us up today i'll see where she is i took out my phone i had two voice messages from Derek and three unread texts from my mom i read the text messages first i'll be there in a few i stopped somewhere she sent that 20 minutes ago it was Derek. 10 minutes ago <laughs> seven minutes ago <laughs> what did she mean when she said it was Derek? and what did the last message mean <laughs> I started to get worried. She should have been here by now. I quickly opened my voicemail. China, I really need you to get home right now. I found out what your mom was planning. She knows I don't like surprises. Derek's voice sounded strain. Strain? Like he was trying to contain his anger for some reason. I listened to the second one. China, I really need you to get home as soon as possible. There's a situation and you need to come home. And then he said the three words that made all the color drain out of my face. I love you. Something was totally wrong. Derek only told us he loved us when there were people near and he wanted to look like a good father. Olivia, we need to go home now. I grabbed her hand, ignoring her questions, and ran to Jay's car, which thankfully was still there. I opened the door and practically shoved Olivia in the back seat. Oh my God, he put the glock on this girl. Jay, take us home now. Without protest, he started the car and followed my instructions to our house. Before we got into our neighborhood, I could see red and blue lights flashing in the distance. Please don't be coming from 
our house, please. When we turned the corner to get our house, no, nope, it's supposed to be to get to our house. There were at least six police cars and two ambulance trucks in front of our house. I had to try my hardest not to cry or to let out any type of emotion coming over me. Olivia, how are Okay, Olivia, however, did it. She started bawling her eyes out and banging on the door and screaming at Jay to open the door. Jay, shocked by the scene, stopped the car a few blocks from our actual house and unlocked the door. As soon as Olivia heard the click of the door unlocking, she slammed the door open and starting sprinting down the street towards the house. Jay and I jumped out of the car and chased Olivia, trying to get to her before she reached the scene below. Jay got to her before I did. He scooped her up and held her down to his chest, which prevented her from seeing what was happening and from her hitting and kicking him. I ran on past them towards the house. I put Anne short instead of a short chubby male officer who looked like he was in his mid 50s came up to me before I could get past the yellow tape that was on both sides of the house and stretched to the house across the street. Ma'am I can't let you cross this tape. We're doing an investigation. I'm going to need you to back up. He said in his heavy southern accent. I live here. I understand but if you're not an officer then you can't get past this yellow tape. I started to get frustrated. Yellow tape. Yellow tape. Ayo, ayo, wait. If you watch Star, you know that song. Anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to know what the heck is going on. Jay and Olivia, who was now sobbing in Jay's chest, finally made it down the street and stood beside to the right of me. Okay, can you at least tell me what happened? Sure, I can do that for you. He pulled out a small notebook that had notes scribbled in it. A male with olive skin, black hair, 6'1", and black eyes reported that he found his wife, a woman with medium dark hair, light brown hair, 5'8", and black eyes dead in her bedroom closet. Closet. The woman was medium dark skin. So maybe she's biracial, biracial girl. He finished and closed his notepad. Why would he say it so blatantly like that? Like if she literally said I lived here and she looks like a child, why would he just say yeah, your mother? Dead in the closet. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, Olivia was sobbing harder than she was before. Tears were rolling down my eyes. That's a lie, I whispered to myself. Excuse me, the officer asked. That's a lie, <laughs> I screamed, unable to hide my emotions anymore. My mom would never commit suicide. I then remembered the text she sent me. The officer was in the middle of saying something, but I cut him off. I had proof she didn't commit suicide. She sent me a text that said Derek, the man who supposedly called 911 because he's an innocent person, killed her. I showed him the text message. After he read them, he still didn't look convinced. So I made him listen to the voice messages Derek sent me. He took out his walkie talkie that was in his belt and said something that I didn't understand. I'm going to show this to one of the head officers and I'll be back. He came back two minutes later. Okay, so I have good and bad news for y'all. Which one do you want to hear first? Why are you saying it so like? All right, so. I know you would say your mom literally did commit suicide, but I have good and bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? You know, it doesn't matter. Today already sucks. I doubt your good news won't change anything. I said more bitter than I meant to. Well, the good news is that Derek guy is under arrest and his trial will be in about two months. That's probably the best news I heard all day because of course that's not going to last long. I thought to myself, the bad news is that you don't have a guardian. So you and what other siblings you have is going to have to go to a foster home. No, Olivia cried out. <laughs> Trying to kick Jay, but his grip was too strong. I don't think like once you get arrested, you immediately go to trial. Like I feel like that's not how it works, but maybe, maybe. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but you have to be 18 or older to live by yourself. What if Jay is 18? He like, y'all can live with me. Okay, anyway, inconvenience. You call my mother being murdered and my stepdad going to freaking jail at inconvenience? Are you serious right now? I said in disbelief. He thinks living with people I don't know and possibly being separated from my sister, my only family now, an inconvenience. I'm sorry was all he said then he walked away with his head hanging low. Without reacting the way I wanted to I just turned away and walked back up the street towards the car not caring about anything anymore. My life is over. I have no mother, no father and my only sister might get separated and to top it all off there isn't a certainty that Derek would even be in jail for the rest of his life. I couldn't even make it all the way to the car. I just dropped in the middle of the road and started sobbing. I no longer care about being strong for Olivia or putting on an act so people can think my life is fine because it's not. I felt Jay sit down beside me. He didn't say anything. He just let me and Olivia cry our eyes out. After what felt like forever, we stopped crying. Why? What did I ever do to deserve this? I asked to myself. China, look at me. When I did, he continued. You're strong, okay? Everything might not be going all fine and dandy now, but eventually you and Olivia will be taking over this world, he said with a small smile on his face. Not a smirk, but a genuine smile. But I don't want to be strong anymore. I just want to be done with this. It's too much. Don't you dare 
dare say that you're going to be 18 however long then you and olivia can go do whatever you guys want october 13th what that's when i turn 18 october 13th china what that's today what it can't be the 13th already jay pulled out his phone and showed me the date and it said october 13th i immediately jumped up when what jay chuckled at me how can i forget my own birthday a lot of thinking going on up there jay we have to go a light bulb going off go where he asked standing up and still carrying olivia who fell asleep from exhaustion i don't know but we can't stay here if we stay they are going to take olivia and we can't let that happen we have to go now without waiting for him i ran to the car and got in the passenger side he caught up to me and carefully put olivia in the back seat and got in the driver's side he started the car and we left the neighborhood we didn't even know where we were going we just kept driving until we left new york and everything within it and we never returned i'm sorry <laughs> um all right i feel like realistically would this ever happen in real life maybe maybe but it's a slim chance that all of this would have worked out for miss china you know also how old is jay because there's no way they could just run away like that and jay parents not be concerned also what about school did she get a ged did she get a diploma what about miss olivia is she homeschooled now i feel like there's a lot of a lot of holes in this story and also the fact that i submitted this and my teachers were not concerned I literally wrote about an abusive household and the stepfather killing Miss China's mother in the bedroom closet at that. And nobody thought, hey, maybe she has mental problems. You know, why would she write this for a writing contest? You know, I'm sure this wasn't on the theme of said contest. So I'm just concerned that my teachers weren't concerned. Uh, but overall, I get, I get it. I get where she was going. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think. Like, did you think, how do you forget? I mean, I guess this is easy. But the fact that nobody said happy birthday to her, first of all, fake friends. And why her birthday October 13th? Anyway, that's the end of this video. If you like this video, make sure you like the video. Make sure you comment below. Should she just publish this now and become a best-selling New York Times author? I think she should. I think she should. Make sure you subscribe, okay? Make sure you follow me on Instagram, shade at day 2 wise underscore. Follow me on Twitter, shade day 2 wise underscore. Or follow me on Snapchat, shade all day underscore OG. And with that, I'm out. Bye, guys.